Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. Every couple of months now, I'm seeing Chromebooks go out on liquidation at really low prices, and this is one of them. This is the IdeaPad Chromebook 3 from Lenovo. We looked at one of these about a year or two ago. This one is different because it is running with an AMD processor, an A6, versus the Intel chips we typically see. One thing to note, though, is that this is not one of the more powerful AMD Ryzen processors, so you're not going to get a lot of performance out of this. But for the price, I think this is a fun little secondary computer to have or maybe a computer for a kid because you can get these at really affordable prices. And before we get into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this Chromebook is all about. Now you're definitely gonna find this for under $200. I paid $125 and this morning I saw one selling for $99, a really good deal for a full functioning computer. Now this again, as I mentioned, is powered by an AMD A69220C processor. It's a dual core chip. It has four gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage. These are typically assigned to students in schools, so there's not a lot of frills here, but again, it is mostly functional. It has an 11.6 inch display running at 720p. The maximum brightness out of it is 250 nits, so it's not all that bright, especially outside. Now this is a lower cost TN display, so you're not gonna see the visual punch that you get out of a more expensive laptop. The colors are a bit muted. You don't have the viewing angles you might see on a more expensive display, but as TN displays go, it looks okay to me. It is not a touch display either, so you'll have to use the trackpad for it. The display doesn't go down all that far either, so you wanna be careful that if you have a kid using this, that they're not pushing it back too far on you. Um, but overall, the build quality feels pretty good. It's all plastic, um, but it's a nice solid plastic, again, designed for the rough and tumble of what it might encounter in schools. It's pretty attractive, actually. It's a little nicer than the last one we looked at here. It weighs 2.46 pounds or 1.12 kilograms, so not all that heavy. The battery life, they say, is about 10 hours, and I would agree with that assessment based on what you're doing with it. So if you're sticking to the basics like web browsing and email, the sorts of things this is designed for, I think you can definitely hit that mark on battery life, but if you push it harder with the Android games and other things that tax the processor a bit more, I think that will wear the battery down a little bit quicker. I was very pleased with the port selection on this one. So you have a USB Type-C port here. This is a full service port, meaning that you can get power in, data out, and display output from it as well. A little bit earlier, I plugged it into my 4K monitor and I was able to get a 4K 60 image out of this port. You cannot, though, hook up two displays. It only supports one external display at a time, but it did work and I was able to kind of turn this into a desktop. So if you have a docking station, uh, you could plug one cable in, power it, get your video out, and then add some additional ports to the mix as well. You have a USB 3 port here, a full-size USB-A port. You have an SD card reader here, which can augment its internal storage. You have a microphone headphone jack over here. On the other side, you've got another full-size USB-A port along with another full-service USB-C port. So you could charge it from either side of the laptop, which is very convenient. And then you've got your Kensington lock slot here to prevent your cheap laptop from walking off the desk. Now it has a 720p webcam, and I was actually impressed with the image quality out of it. It actually looks pretty good uh, for a cheap laptop here. So if you're doing web conference calls and that sort of thing, this should do well with that, and your images will look pretty good provided everything is well lit. There is no shutter mechanism for the webcam, so you'll need to cover that up manually when you are uh, looking for some privacy. On the keyboard side of things, it's a nice keyboard. It's your standard Lenovo keyboard, which means that it's got nicely spaced keys here, a decent amount of key travel. I think if you're looking for a cheap word processing machine, this will certainly do it for you. The keyboard is not backlit, um, but again, very easy to type on here, and it doesn't take much getting used to. The keys feel very standard on this, and of course, it follows the Chrome OS layout. The trackpad is also pretty good for a cheap laptop. No issues with it uh, navigating the computer. So altogether, I think from an input and output standpoint, this is a pretty good value. But I found the overall performance here to not be so great. We'll visit the nasa.gov homepage here to start out, 
and it does feel a little sluggish, even against some of the other cheap Chromebooks we've looked at recently. And that's just due to this AMD processor not being all that powerful. Still though, it's good enough for web browsing here. It does have AC Wi-Fi on board, so it'll support five gigahertz Wi-Fi in your home. It doesn't though, of course, support the new Wi-Fi 6 standard, but I think for the things you're gonna do on this Chromebook, it is probably fine. Uh, so overall, not a bad browsing experience, but just a little bit sluggish, especially if you've got a web page that has a lot of scripting and other things that it might load on there. Now, a little bit earlier, we checked out YouTube and I ran a 720p60 video from my YouTube channel. That video played back pretty well. There was a couple of drop frames here or there, but nothing significant or noticeable. But when we did try to play 1080p content from YouTube, that's where things kind of fell off the tracks. The video was skipping around quite a bit. It was having a hard time keeping up with it. So I think 1080p 30 video should be okay, but 60 frames per second, things that you might see on YouTube and Twitch might challenge this little processor a little bit more. And although it does have a 720p display only, it can output at higher resolutions, which is why we tested video at a higher res. So just be aware of that you might struggle a bit playing back some high resolution media on it. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 38.2, which is pretty low actually compared to some of its peers that came out around the same time this one did when it was new. You'll note there at the top, there's another Lenovo IdeaPad 3 Chromebook that had an Intel processor that performed a lot better, especially for the kinds of things that Chromebooks do like web browsing. So just be prepared for anything beyond the minimums here you're likely going to see some sluggish behaviors as you're browsing around. And the speakers on this sounded a little better than I expected. They are downward firing, so to some degree, the sound quality will vary based on what surface the laptop is resting on, but uh, they sound pretty clear. You've got good stereo separation out of them, and although they don't have a great range of sound, it doesn't sound as cheap as I expected it to sound. So if you're doing conference calls and spoken word stuff, it's actually gonna be very clear out of these. Uh, music, of course, will do better with some headphones attached, either via the port here on the side or over Bluetooth. Now, like other Chromebooks, this does run Android apps, and you can pull up the Play Store uh, just by clicking on the icon on your taskbar. You will see a good amount of compatibility, although there are a few games that don't run as well on here because this is not an ARM processor like your phone might be. So, for example, Call of Duty Mobile is a game that crashes quite a bit on these uh, types of processors. But other games do run great. I ran Horizon Chase a little bit earlier with my Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. It ran at the full frame rate here. The game was very responsive. And I did find the graphical performance out of this to not be as sluggish as the CPU performance was. It also did a great job streaming games. I loaded up the Xbox Cloud Gaming a little bit earlier and played a game again with my Xbox controller. This was using the web browser and I found it to be a very responsive experience here and everything looked and played great at 60 frames per second. So if you are subscribed to a game streaming service or streaming games in your home, this will be a nice platform to do it with. Now, another cool feature of Chrome OS is that you can run Linux apps on it and this one will do it as well. So we can load up our terminal screen here and load up Nano here, for example, to do some text editing. I was also able to install the Libre Office Suite which is a Microsoft Office equivalent uh, program that will run locally on the laptop and save the files locally on the laptop. So if you're not online, you can do a spreadsheet, for example, like we're loading up here, or do a word processing document or a presentation, and it all performs pretty well and about where I expected it to perform. So if you are looking to play around a bit with Linux, this is another fun thing you can do with a Chromebook like this. Now, all Chromebooks come with an end of support date where they stop getting updates from Google. And this one's date is June of 2027. And that's not all that far away. And the reason why it's closer than some of the other Chromebooks we review here on the channel is that this is a liquidation unit that's been out for a while. So the date applies based on when the system was released as a product, not when you bought it. So just be aware of that. Although Chrome has a really neat program called Chrome OS Flex that allows you to install Chrome OS on older machines. And I would imagine we could probably shoehorn it on this machine when it's time comes to extend its lifespan. 
Maybe that'll be a topic of a future video. I've got a couple of old Chromebooks around here I may want to try to upgrade. But overall, it's not a bad laptop for the price that you'll likely find it for. If you're somebody that doesn't like attaching a keyboard to a tablet because it's not quite a computer experience, this is a fully functional laptop with a desktop web browser and Linux support and of course the Android support as well. And I found it to be a pretty good value if you keep your expectations in check. That is going to do it for this look at the IdeaPad Chromebook 3. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR. Tom Albrecht, and I'm the Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.